Hey everybody, I am here with uh, Carissa Davis, who was one of my absolute favorite students, and she has graduated and now has a, a position as a school counselor, and I thought she would be the perfect person to talk to, to, um, to share, you know, tips and how the whole process is for her and what it's like being a new counselor. So I guess I'll start out by asking, like, how did the job process go? Like, how did you find the position? How did you apply? And what was it like? Yeah, so um, it was a little bit of a journey for me. I probably had at least five interviews mm -hmm. before um, I had the interview in which that was the job I received. Mm -hmm. So I did get some good practice in um, before I, I got this job. But I started as soon as I graduated, I updated everything. Um, I think it was through like the Alabama State Department of Education. Mm -hmm through their site, updated my resume, answered the questions through there. And anyone that's been a teacher and has used that before um, mm -hmm. probably knows those procedures because as soon as you update all of those things, you can just go through and click apply. Okay. Um, and all of those positions that are open in Alabama, it shows counseling positions that are open. Um, so what I did is I, I updated all my information and then you can click um, like sections of mm -hmm. the state that you want those jobs to show. Mm -hmm. So you could highlight every section of Alabama mm -hmm. and all of the counseling jobs within um, mm -hmm. the state would show up. I kind of started with just a few sections mm -hmm. and kind of expanded my search, you know, as time went on. Okay. So then you found some positions that you were interested in and you applied to them. And how did it go from there? I did. Honestly, I got like an interview to almost every place I probably applied for. Um, I started off kind of looking in North Alabama just because that's where my family is from. And I think certain principals are probably looking for certain things or certain levels of experience, mm -hmm. um, a certain personality to fit their school. Mm -hmm. And I think I probably just, you know, wasn't exactly what they were looking for. But like I said, instead of like letting that discourage me, I just thought, well, I'm just going to be more prepared for the next interview. I have more questions, you know, mm -hmm. under my belt to be prepared for. Right. So when you got the interview, did they just call you and ask you to schedule a time and come in? Yes. Now, some of them um, I met with virtually. They were a little more comfortable meeting with me uh, through a Zoom meeting or like Google Meet. But uh, some of them I was able to go in. Now, the one I had, because I, I work at J. Larry Newton in Fairhope, mm -hmm. and I was up near Huntsville at the time. Um, and the, I, I'm like the second counselor at the school, so I'm, I'm very lucky. Um, but she had called me and said, you know, we were looking over your resume. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to come in for an interview? Mm -hmm. And she scheduled that about a week out because she knew that would mm -hmm. be a bit of a drive. And, uh, so I came down the next week and pretty much as, as soon as after I interviewed, they talked and then called mm -hmm. me. And they were like, that's good. You didn't have to wait a long period of time because yeah. I know waiting for a job is always super nerve wracking. Right. So when you went to the interview, who was involved with it and what type of things did you bring? Did you show them anything or what kind of things did y'all talk about? So after the first couple of interviews, I decided to put together a little portfolio. I think you had told us that that was a good idea. Yeah. So I, you know, had some pictures in there, um, sample lesson plan, mm -hmm. things like that. And I don't know if, I think maybe one interview, I actually felt like there was a good opportunity with mm -hmm. a question to show them mm -hmm. that portfolio. Um, in this specific interview in which I got the job, there was the principal, the assistant mm -hmm. principal, um, the other counselor that's there, and then one of the reading coaches sat mm -hmm. in as well. Okay. And so what kind of questions did they ask you? Let's see. Okay. I, I actually um, had to think through this one. So let me pull this one up here. Um, okay. Most of them started off and they just asked me to tell them about myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I always tried to add in like 
a fun hobby that I like Mm -hmm. to do or something that maybe would stand out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, They asked me about my use with technology and how I could integrate that in counseling. Um, This interview specifically, they uh, went on and on about how I would deal with an angry parent, Mm -hmm. um, which I thought was so interesting, but just kept you know, throwing different scenarios and what I would do and how I, how, how I would respond to that. Um, my experience with suicide intervention and whether I had done a threat assessment, mm-hmm. um, how I would work with an angry teacher, and then some experience actually with the ASCA national model. A lot of the schools in Baldwin County, we have such an amazing counseling supervisor here. Mm-hmm. And um, they're really, you know, pushing for that to follow that model and to go for the program of distinction. So they had asked me about my experience with that too. So what ages are you working with? I'm with kindergarten through third grade. Okay. And then the other counselor is? The She's fourth, fourth through uh, sixth. We, fourth through our sixth. school goes through sixth grade, yes. Okay. So when the school year started, what was that like? Um, You know, for me personally, it was interesting. I ended up getting... Uh, very sick and missed like two weeks of work. Um, I had just had pneumonia and, um, but I, I had gone to school for probably about eight days Mm -hmm. prior to that. And I was able to do my introductory lesson during that time, which was good. Um, We also had previously decided the other counselor and I, her name's Janie. So if I ever just say that, that's who I'm referring to. We had decided we were going to go ahead and try for the program of distinction. And so we, oh, and we were getting progress monitored Mm -hmm. this year through the state. Mm -hmm. So we had some paperwork for our supervisor to fill out, like um, annual outcome goals, which Mm -hmm. that may be a later question, Um, advisory council, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe like our classroom and group lessons, trying to look through data and decide which students we're going to work with for small groups. We did some of that. And then I did some lesson planning and taught those lessons. And the way that um, that is set up is Janie will teach her lessons on like A weeks and Mm -hmm. I will teach my lessons on B weeks. That way, hopefully one of us is almost always available. That's really great. Yeah. If there's any kind of crisis or thing. So how many classes are you responsible for? 21 um Mm -hmm. there's five in in each grade level k1 two and three and then i also go to the preschoolers too wow so okay so so if you're on a week that you're doing guidance are you just booked the whole week it must be pretty much um thursday is my day with five classes and they're 40 minutes each Mm -hmm. so that does take up a good chunk of my day um every other day of the week it's four classes Mm -hmm. And um, I typically come in right after their PE time um, and teach during that. But I still have a little bit of time to do some other stuff, but I try to do all my individual counseling, small groups, Mm -hmm. 504 meetings on the weeks where I'm not teaching. Do you ever, um, I know the thing that always bothered me or or just frustrated, not frustrated, but just doing the same lesson over and over and over so is that do you feel sometimes that you're just tired of it and you like can't get that energy up to go in the lesson how do you how do you deal with that sometimes I do feel that way and I try to remind myself before I go in there you know they haven't heard this yet Mm -hmm. um occasionally I'll think to myself you know have I already told this class like this section of it or was that yesterday um but yeah I, I try to make each grade level a different lesson and that way it's you know mm-hmm. it's the first time I'm teaching it that day because it's always one grade level per day okay all right that makes sense yeah that it always I always that always tired me out though especially if I would show a video I would know the video by heart you know yes all, and I would be thinking about it in my head it would yeah. drive me nuts, so so when you did your introductory lesson before you got sick uh, what was that like? How did you plan that? Okay, so um, I did something pretty similar for the kindergarten and first graders, and then pretty much the same type of thing for second and third. 
for kindergarten and first grade, I did the classic um, Miss Potato Head lesson where I went through the parts of Miss mm -hmm. Potato Head. My eyes, you know, are here to look for where I can help you. My ears are here to listen. Um, and we built Miss Potato Head together. And then they like had a sheet that kind of went along with that. Mm -hmm. um, the second and third graders, I did like a counseling toolbox lesson mm -hmm. and went through um different parts like I think there was like a picture of a heart a lifesaver an apple because we'll talk about you know healthy choices a notebook we'll discuss lessons on study skills mm -hmm. um and then I also had a book that just kind of went through some things as well as confidentiality I talked about that and how if you share with me that you're being hurt someone else is being hurt mm -hmm. um or you give me permission to share that with mm -hmm. someone then uh, I will tell who needs to know mm -hmm. um we also have that posted in our room as well okay so that was kind of how the the first lesson went so you said that during that time um sometimes you are able to fit in individual counseling what kind of things do you see normally in individual counseling? So I have like a handful that um, either their parent reached out to me or their teacher and said, you know, a lot's going on at home right now. Mm -hmm. Can the counselor be checking in with my child? Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, every other week on those A weeks where I'm not teaching, I will be sure at some point to pull them Sometimes I just play a game with them. A lot of them love Guess Who. Yes. And um, it'll just give them a chance, you know, to build a relationship with me. And I'll say, is there anything you want to talk about with me today? And sometimes they don't want to. They just, you know, want to be with someone and feel like an adult has their attention and, um, and time with me. So yeah. sometimes I'll do that. Now, other times... Uh, one of the things that we focus on for counseling is, of course, attendance, um, academics, and then discipline. And those are the three areas you can pick like your annual outcome goals in. Well, because of COVID, I did not pick an attendance goal this year. Um, and so I did academics and discipline. Mm -hmm. And this will kind of go into small groups too, but um, I will check our platform, Scantron Analytics, mm -hmm. for any disciplinary referrals. Mm -hmm. I try to do that every week. And if there is one, I will go discuss that with that student. Mm -hmm. um, I also pulled data from the previous year, and I noticed a trend in hitting, kicking, pushing, biting, and disrespect. Mm -hmm. That was the highest uh, two categories for students kindergarten through third grade over the past year. And so those students, I'm working with a small group and my goal was to get um, 17 referrals down to 12. Mm -hmm. So far this year, we've only had one. So it works. In, in that area. Yes. But so still, I'm hoping that. Uh, that's a big change though. Mm -hmm. And you should feel good because you did that, you know? We want for you. I hope it's paid off. I've been using um, the second step curriculum. I know different schools may have different things, but that's what I've been using with my small group in via small group. Yeah. management. I, my second goal was in academics to lower the number of Fs mm -hmm. between kindergarten, first, second, and third grade students. Um, or I'm sorry, kindergarten's like doesn't get those grades. So first, second, third. And I work with a handful of kids um, with the second step. Uh, learning skills mm -hmm. section and I'll do that with this do you have like regular times that you meet with them or I do and I try to always do it during their lunch mm -hmm. um, I have a total of four groups two of them I'm able to do it during lunch mm -hmm. the other two uh, it it didn't really coordinate for all the students so mm -hmm. I get them like at two o'clock mm -hmm. and we dismiss around um, 2 45 mm -hmm. so I, I'm able to see them at least for about 30 minutes once I walk around and get them all to me. And how many students total are you responsible for? Uh, within the small groups or my caseload? Just your caseload for all of the kids that are in your grades. Okay, we have close to 100 
in most grade levels. Mm -hmm. I think second grade, there's a little over 100. So I'm going to say about 400 in my caseload. So how often then do you deal with parents? Because that's a lot of kids to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I almost think because parents aren't able to come into schools right now, I probably haven't experienced mm -hmm. what a normal year may look like with that. Um, there are some teachers actually one just this afternoon had me sit with her and call a couple parents about some different things that were bothering them. And I didn't really say much. I think just having like someone there helped her. Right. right. Um, but you know, I'll get a few things, like I said, about parents contacting me, things going on at home. Mm -hmm. They want to be seen by me. Um, and sometimes I'll, you know, offer up the mental health resources and just say is are you interested in like a mental health therapist mm -hmm. um because and I'll have to explain you right. know that I I don't actually do mental health therapy but I can do some short-term things mm -hmm. okay so what other responsibilities do you have besides those that we talked about all right so aside from teaching small groups and individual um I am the RTI chair. Mm -hmm. So um, I know some schools may call it like PST or things like that, but the Alabama Literacy Act kind of changed this year and kids who are like 25th percentile or below on star mm -hmm. reading have to uh, be on tier three. Mm -hmm. This is for kindergarten through third grade. And so um, that's been a big chunk and we only have meetings once a month but um it, it's just new and kids are coming in from not being in school in March and so of course their score you mm -hmm. know may not right. be as great as it normally would be um I'm also in charge of the 504 plans mm -hmm. for kindergarten through third graders I only have five throughout those grade levels so it's not too many mm -hmm. And I am the secondary building test coordinator. So our math coach is the primary, mm -hmm. um, but I've still been doing the virtual trainings with them. Mm -hmm. And hmm, I think that's, those are the main responsibilities, yeah. Do you ever feel stressed, like you have too much going on or is it just enough? Uh, I, at the beginning of the school year from being sick, and then we actually were out for another couple weeks because of Hurricane Sally. Mm -hmm. um, it took me probably till the end of October before I felt like I had a good grip on things. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, being January, I, I, I feel like I have a, a good understanding of what my role is. Um, Janie and I have broken up the 15 components of program of distinction. That's probably the only thing I may spend time on outside mm -hmm. of school hours, just because you have to reflect on um, each component. Mm -hmm. But because we've broken that up throughout the school year, I think we'll be able to finish before the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, I think at this point in time, I do have a good grip. You feel like you're in a good place. Yeah, now some days, you know, I'll get way more emails than others. And it's a lot of individual students that mm -hmm. teachers want me to see. And I just do my best if that day is already pretty packed to mm -hmm. see them by the end of that week. Mm -hmm. And what is it like working with teachers? It's great. I, mm -hmm. I truly like, I feel like I have a great relationship with each of the teachers in my grade levels. Um, I don't, of course, talk to the mm -hmm. teachers in the older grade levels as much. I'm not working with their students. Um, mm -hmm but it's been very helpful and I feel like they have a good understanding of what my role is and they know like I'm not a miracle worker but I'll do my best with um you know the issues that come up and I'll sit with them if they need me to to talk to a parent or be in a parent conference where they come to me for 504s um or like one third grade teacher has had an issue with clicks. Mm -hmm. So I've like scheduled a time to 
meet specifically with her class and do an extra lesson just on that topic. So I think they have a good understanding of, of what my role is and how I can help them and their students. Okay. So if you could give uh, my current students just any tips or ideas, what might, what might those be? Okay, so I did um, jot a few notes down just because I was trying to think through this one. Um, one thing I would say is just how important it is to know the ask a national model and I think the very first class I took was on like the basics of school counseling where we did learn that um I think it was updated maybe in the summer of 2019 or 2018 there's a newer edition of the handbooks mm -hmm. um and our actually I think through New Counselor Academy with the state, they sent us the Ask a National Model Implementation Guide and another book on it. So they do a really good job of making sure we're knowledgeable um, of, of that model. Uh, let's see. Probably when looking for jobs just before you do go in for an interview and maybe even before you apply, research the school website um, see if they have a Facebook page and look at some posts, see what's important to them. And then just wherever you're interning to uh, build positive relationships with students, faculty, staff, mm -hmm. admin. Um, you never know how they could help you potentially get a job and how great of a reference they could be for you. Okay, well, thank you so much for letting me interview you. And I'm so proud of you. And I know that you're going to be, I know that you're doing a great job and you're just going to be a great counselor. So I just want to say thank you.